Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I'm going to unbox the uh, birthday kit that came out in Stamptember. It was one of the last Stamptember items to come out and I got mine in and I'm just going to give you a quick look at everything that comes in the kit uh, and then we'll make some cards with it. So let's jump right in. I am going to keep it in this pouch that came in the August kit. This obviously didn't come in this kit, but I'm going to keep everything in here. So, all right, let's pull everything out. I think that's everything. Yeah. Okay. So you obviously get the uh, new code. So if you want a code to save five dollars at uh, the Simon store, there's the the card there. All right, so to start, we do get three of the new Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in Sunbeam, Ocean, and Blush. That's pretty cool. I'm really excited to try these out. And they even have the like names labeled on the side, which is really neat. I also have two blender brushes. These are the smaller blender brushes, which is great because, again, I really want to try these out. And uh, you can't buy the kit anymore. Obviously, this was a stamp timber release, but everything that's in the kit can be bought separately. So if there's anything you really like uh, out of the cards that I make or out of the kit that you see, you can go and purchase that. And I'll have it all linked down, down below. And then you get a whole pack of six holographic envelopes. It's probably going to make my camera all crazy, but those are pretty cool. Sorry, the cat's playing with the paper bag on the floor there. You get this really neat embossing folder, which I'm pretty sure is, yeah, circle rings. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to have to emboss something. Uh, probably these. <laughs> you get a pack of the holographic rainbow uh, A2 sized sheet cards here. So they're like a rainbow holographic. That's going to be really neat. You get a whole set. I believe there's, well, there's quite a few. I wonder if you get both the reverse and the... Um, regular let's look the sentiment strips so let's check this out i'm just gonna cut this open so we can see if it's uh, just all the black on white or if it's also the white on black uh, i think there's four in a set i believe and of course everything in this card kit is birthday themed uh, since it is a birthday kit and since i generally make a lot of birthday cards that that was pretty perfect okay so you have they're all reverse so they are all the black with white writing uh but you got two different type like sets of type there so that's really cool and you can foil these and stuff which is really neat and then you got a bunch of uh, rainbow pattern papers that are one-sided which is even better so we'll take a really quick look at everything that comes from those um, I love it when they're one-sided just because then I don't have to choose what I want uh, to use right I find that if they're double-sided I'm always a little bit leery to cut into them because what if I really like the pattern on the back so those are beautiful and then we're going to get into some stencils there's three different stencils in here so you have this super super delicate stencil look at that it's going to be stunning we'll have to put some pixie spray on the back of that because that's just super delicate but how pretty so there's that stencil and then there's also this balloon die or balloon die balloon stencil that has like the, the five different shapes of balloons and then a couple of different strings that's going to be really pretty and then there's these two that go together. They're candles. So like you have a base and then you could use this to uh, do like texture paste, glitter paste on top, which I think would look just stunning. And then you could just kind of line them up and, and do different stuff on top or use them separately, whichever you prefer to do. So that's another stencil. And then we do have this little balloon die, which is super, super cute. Uh, that's gonna come in really neat. And of course, a piece of candy, always have a piece of candy. And then there is the six by eight stamp set with a whole bunch of fun birthday, birthday goodies. So that's really cool. We'll have to color up some images. And then the cardstock. So there is four pieces of cardstock in this. I'm guessing because there's no idea sheet with it. So I'm thinking this is Peacock. I believe Sunshine Yellow, I think Lipstick Red. And I believe this is the 120 pound um, white cardstock from Simon. So yeah, that is what's in the kit. So I'm going to jump right into making something. All right. Thanks guys. 
All right, so for the first card, we're going to do an A2 sized card. And I'm going to use this beautiful holographic cardstock in the a rainbow holographic in the embossing folder to create a really cool textured background. I am going to trim this down after, and I do run it through my Big Shot. Uh, I prefer my Big Shot for these really thick 3D foam or 3D uh, embossing folders uh, just because they're so thick and I worry about them going through my Gemini. So I always use my Big Shot for that. And I am going to trim down a black mat as well, just because I really like to frame my pieces and because the sentiment is uh, printed on black uh, with black toner ink on a white cardstock core. So I thought bringing in some black would just kind of tie it together. And I do trim down just a small amount. I believe my uh, panel is about an eighth of an inch smaller than my black mat. And then my black mat about is about an eighth of an inch uh, smaller than my a2 size base and this is completely up to you i mean this is what i like to do i like small amounts of border but you could have it be a quarter or, or whatever size you prefer and so here i'm just going to trim down the happy birthday sentiment uh these toner sheets are super neat this is kind of my first time using them um but i just i've never foiled them which is kind of funny and in this video i'm actually going to foil two uh which you would have seen from the thumbnail I don't do it on this one and I, I could have, but I kind of thought that the background on this was so stunning on its own that I don't want to change this card too much. I kind of, I mean, simple is so relative, right? Like this is kind of a more simple card for me um, because it's really just a bunch of layers and an embossing folder. And, uh, and I will bring in that balloon die cut, but there's not a ton of stuff going on in this card. You guys wait until card four, uh, <laughs> then we'll talk about being a little bit extra. But in this one, I kind of wanted to start out a little bit simple. And if you guys have been to my channel for a minute, you know that I love things that are rainbow. That's kind of just, I love bold colors. That's kind of just my thing. So this kit really spoke to me. Now this isn't a limited edition kit. Of course it was a stamped timbre kit, so it's not sold, it's not available anymore, uh, but you can buy all the individual items. So those are linked and listed down below if you want any of the items or you're interested in anything. Uh, I always have everything linked below. And I do have my little sidekick here and I'm just gonna put the balloons through it. I just thought that was super cute and I'm just cutting it out of a piece of white cardstock uh, just to bring in a little more white to the front of the design you again could have done this in a color but because there's already so much color in the background I kind of just chose to have it just be white and I am going to cut it out one more time in the white cardstock as well just to bulk it up a little bit and I did adhere it onto a piece of vellum with some liquid glue and I'm just fussy cutting around the balloons so that there's something in them that kind of helps them stand apart from the background because otherwise you'd be able to see the background through it uh, through these little balloons super easily which isn't a bad thing like that's a that's also a look but I kind of chose to have them stand on their own, uh, but still be able to see the background through it. So I did choose a vellum. I actually pondered a pearlescent vellum, but you couldn't really see through it as well as I had hoped. So I just went with a plain heavyweight vellum. Uh, and then I just, because I didn't, I mean, you could die cut it and inlay it, but I kind of wanted it to uh, be one piece on the background there. And then see here, I'm going to adhere one more piece on top. And this just adds a little more bulk to those balloons. It lets them stand on their own a bit more. And I just used really thin dots of my Barely Art glue. That's why I love that thin tip so much. I'm going to jump between my Nouveau Deluxe glue and my Barely Art glue. And the only reason I do that through this whole video is because I love the fine tip on the Barely Art glue for any of the kind of thinner details, but once I'm adhering bases or panels to each other, I think that the Nouveau is just easier for that because it's just a bigger tip on the, the glued bottle. But I mean, use whatever you prefer. Uh, these are just my preference, and I do prefer liquid glue uh, as a general rule, unless I'm trying to add dimension. So yeah, so I'm just going to adhere that down kind of to the left-hand side, and then I, <laughs> you guys know that I can't, I can't stop myself. I have to add all the shiny things. So I brought in some Moonshine sequins by Simon's Stamp. Uh, these are probably my favorite sequins because they add a little shine and shimmer, but they don't steal the show. Uh, they just kind of enhance what you already have going on. And in such a busy background, they didn't need any more, right? Like it's just, it's already so shiny that uh, they just, they add a little bit extra to the background, but they don't take away from what you already have going on. And I did stamp on the inside. I did a couple of the insides on these cards, and then a couple of them I left blank uh, just so I could... Uh, 
change them up when I decide who they're going to. So there is card one. Here is a closer look at it. I'd love to know what you guys think. And we're jumping straight into card two. So card two is going to be a mini slimline card. I, I love mini slimline cards. And when I cut the base, I always do six by six inches and then score at the three inch mark. It. That's just my preference for slimline cards. Um, I don't think there's a wrong way to do them. This is just what I like to do. So I score on both sides because I have a very heavyweight cardstock. Uh, and then we're going to jump into some patterned paper, which you guys know I struggle a little bit with, but I tried really hard to use some of the patterned paper in this card and I'm or in this kit. And the, this kit is stunning. Like I made five cards. I could have way, made way more five, more than five cards. Um, cause there's a few things that I didn't end up even really using in these cards. Like I could have used the stamp set quite a bit more. I could have, you know, there, there's some different things I could have done and I didn't, I didn't use all of the stencils. I didn't, you know, so uh, there's way more ideas that could come from this and there'll be ideas on my channel coming forward. Uh, this is just what I came up with for these five cards. So I measured out the word celebrate in the stamp set and uh, figured out that it was about three lines or three stripes worth of uh, the, the panel here. And the panel I cut down an eighth of an inch off so that it had a little white border going around it on my card base. And then I cut out the three strips there so that I could uh, stamp the celebrate and emboss it in the center of that kind of line. I'm kind of trying to change up how I do my uh, pattern paper cards because I kind of always do the same layered idea. Uh, so I'm trying to kind of to think outside the box and, and do stuff that is slightly different. So this is the kind of idea for this card. And then I want to stamp celebrate in the center there. So that, that's kind of my design idea for this card. So I am going to put it into my Misty and hold down the panel so that I know where I want my uh, ce Celebrate to be. And I did add some of the stars. Uh, this card kit comes with, I think it was like four or five star shapes in the stamp set. And I brought out three. And I am going to heat emboss this. So this is actually the first time I've ever used the Strawberry Champagne Embossing Powder by Ink on 3. Oh, it's stunning. I'm going to have to use it a lot more. I, I was a little surprised. I wanted to bring in another kind of more bold color and I kind of had cut out a bunch of the pink from the background. So this was kind of my uh, answer to that. And it's so pretty. And I did emboss right on the background. Uh, I had no problem with that because this is a heavyweight cardstock. So it held up really well, no warping or anything. And I did preheat my gun so that it, my heat gun so that it didn't uh, try to warp the cardstock too much. And there's a bit of a, a pearlescent sheen to this embossing powder. It's kind of hard to see, but man, is it pretty. I'm going to have to bring it out for some other, uh, other projects because it just, I was shocked at how much I, I really liked this embossing powder. And I just melted it until it was smooth and melted. And then I'm going to adhere down my pattern paper. And again, see now I have my Nouveau glue because I'm adhering square, like bigger pieces of paper, but it really, oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I know that it, it, it's my channel, so you're going to see what I prefer to use, but there's no wrong things to use. I mean, you could create this, recreate this card with any birthday stuff that you have in your stash or uh, any stamps that you have like that. These, I just try to give you design ideas that you can then kind of turn into your own, your own idea. So Never think that you have to own everything that's being used in a video. Uh, it's pretty easy to take stuff you own and, and make stuff you want to make out of it. So yeah, so I just adhered it down onto this and the straight on the background. There's no dimension to this card. Uh, it, it's literally flat. Well, I mean, the, the card stock is on top of it. But other than that, it's, it's flat. And I brought those same sequins in and used them on the background of this card as well. Uh, just again, because I really enjoy them. I think that they, they add a little shimmer and shine without taking away from what you have going on in the background. And again, this is a more simple card. Uh, I was trying really hard to focus on cards that could be mass produced if that's something you needed to do. And then I did have to bring in a little extra shimmer. So I have some Stardust Stickles and I'm just filling in the center of the stars uh, that I embossed on the... Uh, with the sentiment there. And I'll hold it up so you can see it. I'm not sure you get the full effect of the stickles. I can see it. It's stunning. But uh, in the, the pictures and in the, when I hold it up, I don't know if you get the full full effect of that beautiful stickles. But I think it turned out really pretty. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Simpler. I got to use pattern paper more often. I, I kind of shy away from it because I like to make my own backgrounds. But it's just kind of a neat way to kind of play with uh, stuff that's kind of 
fun in your own stash already. And here you can see that stickles in there, little stars there. And I just think that it adds a little extra shimmer and shine. And I did do the inside of this one as well. And I did use the Simon Says Stamp inks mostly on the inside. Um, I'd love to blend them, but they're kind of three colors I generally wouldn't blend together. So I'm probably gonna, I'm pondering picking up some more colors so that I can blend those together. So we'll see how that goes. But here I brought in another piece of the uh, pattern paper and we're going to make a shaker card out of this one because I, I love shaker cards, you guys. Like these flat shakers, they're just so exciting to me. And instead of creating a background, I figured I would use a piece of the pattern paper because it's already there and that's, I mean, you could do any of the, the things, right? Like that's totally up to you. So I did use the stamp packaging for this and I just made a mark where I wanted my window to start or my panel my shaker panel uh, and I just trimmed it down with my scissors and I am going to cut it uh, I don't put them on the inside I've seen people doing that kind of creating a pocket that way I don't do that I think it's harder to be honest uh, so I just trim it so that I can adhere the corners down so I do make it uh, quite a bit bigger than I actually need for the panel but that just gives you extra and of course one of my kittens had to come up and say hi uh, that just gives you extra room for adhering it to your back and I don't think that that's ever a bad thing and you do want to use a very strong adhesive I'm using score tape for this I believe this is an eighth of an inch score tape um just use whatever you have that's really strong I wouldn't suggest liquid glue uh, simply because I don't uh, it might ooze out past the paper on the front and then all your glitter would adhere to that instead uh, so this is just what I like to do and I do I do suggest a score tape or or something very very strong red line tape something like that uh, so that's what I'm going to do and I put it around all four sides and I do each side um, as I put the uh, score tape down except the top of course because I need to put in the sparkly bits but um, I am going to also trim off the excess plastic that kind of bunches up in the corner where the two layers meet, if that makes sense. I'm going to show you here in one sec. So I adhere it down and then on the corner there, you kind of have a flap of extra plastic. I just trim those off because it's easier to adhere it to your card base in the end. Um, it's just an extra step. It's not necessary, but I do find that it makes it easier. Just be careful doing that, that you don't cut the panel. Uh, because then you will have shaker bits fall out but it's pretty hard on the back for you to do that so and then there is the shaker panel or window and I'm going to dump in some more of those moonstone or moonshine moonshine uh, sequence and I'm going to add some rock candy distress glitter if if you like loose glitter this glitter is probably one of the most amazing ones on the market in my opinion uh, it doesn't it's not staticky which is being in Canada and being that it's like uh, minus two degrees Celsius outside right now um, and it has been lower than that all week uh, I have a lot of issues with dry static like a lot of static and uh, this is the only glitter I've found that doesn't just go in the window and stick to the plastic which I think is awesome so here you can see like I can shake it around and there's no issue it falls all to the bottom or shakes around whatever it needs to do like and that's this is one of the only glitters I've ever found to do that so I just, I'm excited about that. So if you're in the market for a loose glitter, I mean, Tim Holtz products are always amazing. We all know that. But uh, if you're in the market for a loose glitter, I, I would suggest you pick up some raw candy. And apparently you can dye it with uh, alcohol ink. So it's just something I need to try. So, and here I, I stamped out the cake to go on front of the card. Uh, I'm very, very minimally showing you how I Copic colored this. Um, th there won't be any Copic coloring really it's not a tutorial sorry it's not a tutorial for Copic coloring but I wanted to quickly show you how I got the texture in the cake so I am going to use E53, E33 and E37 and I just stippled the two darker shades on the cake base that's that's all the only that's what I did to get the kind of um light airier looking cake uh, that's kind of what I did I just stippled some colors and I am going to use BG45 and BG49 for the icing and then I used G16 and Y19 for the sprinkles so I kind of was going with a very um matching to the background color palette uh I didn't really bring in a lot of rainbow color necessarily and then here I'm not going to show you how I mink foiled it but I brought in my mini mink and I foiled it with the shattered rainbow uh deco foil oh my it is so pretty <laughs> like uh, I don't know in person like it was shiny on the screen there in person it's even better it was so stunning so I'm gonna have to buy like these sheets a pack of four of these sheets from Simon's Stamp is like 
$2.99 American. So it's not even like they're super expensive. And then if you already have a foiling machine, I believe a laminator would work as well. Uh, you can just foil them like how stunning is that so it just adds a lot of extra shine and shimmer to the front of this uh, already very shiny and shimmery card but uh, I like sparkle and so I add sparkle to everything and then I am just going to remove the score tape I put more skate score tape on the bottom uh, or back sorry I believe this is one inch score tape and I just adhere it down in my score buddy just because I find it's easier to get it in the corner with the base when it's the full panel of a card. And then I'm here, I'm just gonna hold it up and show you. So here you can see that the glitter is all over the background, but once I tip it, it all falls down. It didn't stick to my plastic at all. So that's kind of what I mean when I say the rock candy is just a stunning, stunning glitter. And then here I have that cake. I added a little bit of Spectrum Noir glitter pen to the icing. You can't really see it on camera, sadly, but it is stunning in person. And then that's the inside. I, uh, I did add a piece of patterned paper into the inside as well. So that is card number three. Jumping into card four. Okay, <laughs> I am going to cope with color in this, but I am not going to show it to you. I have tons and tons of videos on my channel. If you want to check out some cope coloring, I'll link them in the card, uh, the I card above there. So I'm going to make a slimline card. And for my slimline cards, I like them to be uh, three and a half by eight and a half, I believe it is. Uh, so I just cut off four inches from a standard size of cardstock, giving me a seven and a half by eight. Is it eight or eight and a half? It's eight and a half by 11. Yeah. So it uh, gives me a panel of, or sorry, a card base of uh, seven and a half by eight and a half. And then I score it at the three inch mark, giving me a three by eight and a half inch. Nope. Three and a half by eight and a half three by eight and a half. Oh boy, guys, that was the three and a half mark, right? I'm pretty much positive it was. I will, <laughs> I haven't made a slimline card in so long. Sometimes I forget my own measurements, but cut a four inch panel or a piece of panel off of the cardstock and then score it in the center. And then you have a slimline card. Again, this is not the only size. Anything you uh, can fit in a size 10 envelope is a slimline card. But uh, I will have the appropriate measurements on the screen for you because now I don't remember. Uh, and I am creating my own background out of three of the stamps in the stamp set. I'm just going back and forth. It's kind of random. I am stamping in a Copic Safe ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And I'm just going to kind of stamp them wherever I see fit. And then when I've kind of started to fill up my panel, I'm going to bring in those stars again from the stamp set. And that's just going to kind of help fill in some of the extra pieces of the background. Uh, because these are bigger pieces, I kind of was running out of being able to put them kind of in there. Like you can kind of see that I'm trying to kind of fit them in little spots uh, and it does work. And then some end up beside each other, but they're going all these directions that you can't really tell which piece is really which. And then here I have two of the stars on the same stamp. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to come in after with the other star. And this one's like a six six pointed star and the other one's a five pointed star so at least they they're like they look different and there's two sizes of each of those stars so that's pretty cool and i'm just using some acrylic blocks uh, i wouldn't suggest trying to use a misty for this just because i think it would be fairly difficult to do the kind of random stamping that you're after for this you absolutely could i just think it would be more work than just using some acrylic blocks and then here i brought in that big five pointed star and i'm just kind of filling in some extra room and then i'm going to bring in also the small five pointed so there's four stars in this stamp set and I'm going to bring that in to fill in a little bit of the extra room. So, I mean, I'm going to color it in with that dark background again that I love to do. Uh, and I'm going to basically show you that I'm not going to color the whole panel black or oh, it's dark gray, but I'm just going to show it to you. So for the coloring of this card, I'm not going to show you how I colored it, but I will tell you the colors. Right now I'm using C9 to create a dark background, uh, but I used R37, R05, YR04, Y17, Y06, VG03, sorry, YG03, G03, BG13, BO4, BVO2, VO4, and RV14. So there is like 12 colors there. I was just going for a pretty serious rainbow effect. Uh, but again, you could have done this in monotone colors and it would look stunning. You could not color this with Copics. You could color it with Tombows or Zig Clean color markers or whatever you like. That like That's completely up to you. I have Copics, so I like to use them. 
And I love this effect where you bring in, I bring in a dark gray, you could bring in a black. I prefer the dark gray. That's just personal preference though. Uh, and then I color in the whole background around these vibrant colors, making it look like I had used a dark cardstock to start with, which of course I didn't uh, because you wouldn't be able to get these vibrant colors on a dark piece of cardstock. So it's just kind of a really cool technique that I really enjoy doing. And uh, I, this is kind of my over the top card in this set. Uh, I just, I love bright, bold colors. Uh, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you, you know this. So I just, I think this is such a cool technique to give you very vibrant colors. Cause with the dark, look how vibrant that looks. Like it's just stunning. And then I did bring in a white jelly roll pen. This is the size 10 and I just dabbed it all all across the background to kind of create like a sparkle effect or stars or snow, however you want to look at it. Um, I kind of thought of it as little sparkles in the background just for some added texture throughout the background. Uh, I love how this looks. Again, you could have left this white and not colored it in black, but or dark gray, but I just love how it looks. So this is kind of the direction that I end up going with cards like this. And I just thought that it was, I'd kind of done more simple cards up to this point, at least simple for me. So I kind of really wanted to do a, maybe a more over the top card. Uh, and you can see I colored the panel across uh, in my uh, rainbow colors. And then I'm gonna bring in a die. This didn't actually come in the kit. This is the uh, happy birthday wafer die from Simon Says Stamp. It's not from the kit, it's, it was in my stash. Uh, and I just really wanted to use it with that same holographic rainbow cardstock that came in the kit. So I did cut a panel of that in half uh, and then just put it through uh, my little kit sidekick there. And I am gonna also cut it out twice from black cardstock just to layer it up a bit more. And I did kind of choose to use the more purpley blue green part of the holographic cardstock because there is also a yellow red orange side. Uh, and then I'm just going to adhere that right on the card. But this kind of gives it a bit more dimension um, with the layers of cardstock without having to go and cut pieces of foam to kind of try to fit behind these letters. I find that can be a bit tedious so I just find layering up the cardstock is easier for me. Uh, but of course, I mean, it's whatever is easier for you. And then I go and directly adhere it down to the corner of the card. I do have a tendency towards using the bottom right corner when I make cards. I'm not totally sure why. That's just kind of where I go uh, when I do a design. I mean, you don't have to. You could have put this up in like the top left corner or you could have tried to center it. Uh, I center my sentiment on the next card, but uh, I do have a tendency towards the left bottom or the right bottom corner. Not really sure why. I just my preference, but there's no wrong way to go about adhering this. And then I'm going to adhere this on to the background. So again, I'm back to my Nouveau Deluxe glue because it is a bigger panel and it's going straight on the background and there is no... Um, border to this one so you could have absolutely again used your score buddy for this or whichever whatever you have the misty works too um, but because it was liquid glue it was super easy for me to just line it up so I just lined it up and then adhered it down and of course because I I love all the shiny things I am going to adhere some icy sparkle crystals from Studio Katya they are just a white crystal or like a clear crystal with silver sparkles inside them I thought that really matched kind of my sparkly background that I was going for uh, and because you know I I have to have all the sparkly things I just love sparkles I also brought in the Spectrum Noir pen and went over over all of the stars with some extra glitter. So I'm gonna hold it up for you guys so you can check it out. I mean, you can see the lines in the dark gray. It doesn't bother me, I don't mind. Uh, but if you do, uh, you could go over it in a second layer and try to negate some of those lines. Um, but I don't really mind. Uh, nobody's gonna complain, I think it's a beautiful card. And then here is a closer look at how this card turned out. I think it's stunning. I don't know. I like extra though. I'm kind of a more is more style crafter. So I did cut down my fifth card. It will be another uh, mini slimline card. So I did the six by six and then scored at the three inch mark. Uh, and I am just kidding, cutting out now a black mat and a uh, panel as well. I use Hammer Mill for this. It's a smooth white card stock. Uh, I like it for Copic coloring. Uh, it blends on beautifully, you're gonna see right here. I brought in that balloon bunches stencil from the kit and I did put some pixie spray on the back of this uh, just because I found that it was a very delicate stencil so it was easier to add something like an adhesive spray onto it than trying to hold it down on my own. Sorry, there's a piece of cat hair stuck there. I was trying to get it off. Uh, and then I'm just going to blend on some purples. Purple is my favorite color. 
So I did go that direction and I am using a blending brush. I did not use the blending brushes out of this kit because uh, they are colored green and yellow or teal and citrine as they are named um, and I'm using purples. So I've kind of been trying to decide about buying some blending brushes uh, and, and then having them dedicated to color families. I'm on the fence. There's so many companies that have beautiful blending brushes and I'm, I'm working on trying to decide if I want some or not. So and this is like one random one that came in a kit from Simon a long time ago. Um, and I just went through Shaded Lilac into Wilted Violet into Villainous Potion. Um, and because it's lightest to darkest in the purple family, it doesn't f a matter that I'm blending um, through the colors with the one brush. I do wash my brush afterwards though. Well, I mean, I, I wash it with a baby wipe. I don't actually wash it, wash it. But And I kind of wanted it to be a more patchy look. I wanted these balloons to look like they had some texture to them, which I know is kind of funny because balloons are not textured. But um, I like texture in my, my cards. So I kind of went for a more patchy look in my coloring. And then I had to splash on some perfect pearls. This is a more simple card again for me, excuse me because I uh, had just done a very, I actually made these cards in the order that you're watching them. So one night I made one, two, and three. And then la like last night, actually, I made four and five. So four took quite a while. I mean, I cut out all the coloring so you didn't see that, but it took a long time. So when I hit this card, I was like, I'm going to make something a little more simple. So I'm going to foil again another one of these sentiments just because I thought it was so neat on the, uh, the other card that I made there like card three uh, so I did it in the purples of this shattered glass uh, foil from a uh, deco foil it's rainbow shattered glass uh, and I just kind of cut they come in these big long sheets and I just trimmed down a little piece from the purpley pink side so that I could have it match more of the background um, and then I just kind of adhered this down to my black mat and then my black mat down to my card base um, and again these are about a, an eighth of an inch smaller than each other that's kind of my desired measurement if you ever need exact measurements guys just let me know um, I kind of just tell you the measurements but if you actually want me to write them down I can do that and have it pop up on the screen. Uh, and then I did put some black thin 3D foam squares on the back of my Let's Celebrate sentiment. And I am going to eyeball center it. You could bring out a T-square ruler and uh, actually make sure it's centered. I don't really care if it's centered exactly or not. Uh, I just love making cards. I don't need perfection from them. I think that's pretty unachievable. So I just try to create something that makes me happy. And then I share it with uh, people that I love and care about and send them away. So, I mean, I don't need perfection. But if you do, you can absolutely bring out your T-square ruler, measure it out, and get it centered. So this is a closer look at card five. And I did have to add some sparkles to with the background because it is a more simple card so I need all this sh the shiny things so there you go guys here we're going to get a closer look at it and that is all the five cards I would love to know what you think did you like one better than the others I'd love to know if you had a favorite or not and I would love if you'd consider subscribing leave me a like leave me a comment and I will see you guys again very soon thank you so much guys Bye bye